Hi, I'm Heather and I've been thrifting for stuff to sell on eBay since 2006. Over the last 1 to 15 years, some items have completely eluded me, remaining just out of reach. My own thrifting white whales that I obsessively stalk. This is not a big money bolo list. These are just a collection of things I find very cool and want to say that I found and flipped at least once. It's a bucket list. I think a lot of us thrifters have those weird items that we quest after, whether we admit it or not. And if I can't find it, maybe one of you can and I can get some sort of contact high. Or maybe putting it out into the universe for you to enjoy will influence the cosmos to send some luck my way. And whatever metaphor you choose, be it bucket list, white whale, or quest item, these are my top 10 thrifting white whales in no particular order. Let's dive in. Number one, Space Cop on Blu-ray. Space Cop is a movie from 2016 by Red Letter Media. Best known for their YouTube movie discussion shows Half in the Bag and Best of the Worst. Needless to say, I'm a huge fan, but not huge enough to have bought a physical copy of the movie when it first came out, I guess. This is probably the youngest whale on my list, having only become scarce at the start of 2021 when it was announced that copies would no longer be produced. Prices have steadily crept upwards with used copies going for 100 and up and sealed copies reaching a high of 200. Odds of finding it? I'm going with a zero on this one. Red Letter Media have not released any print numbers that I know of, so I'm not sure how many copies are out there floating around. I will assume the print numbers are fairly low, coupled with the unlikely odds of someone donating it to a thrift store near me. This is the kind of movie you'd really have to want in the first place, so there's even less of a reason to get rid of it. Unfortunately, this whale will likely remain just out of reach. Number 2. Chuck E. Cheese in the Galaxy 5000 Going from one piece of media to another, I don't remember when I started keeping my eyes peeled for this one, but I'm going to put it at 10 years. So why in the world do I care about finding a random Chuck E. Cheese VHS tape? One that is on YouTube in its entirety. To answer that, we have to go all the way back to 2004. Well, I work for the man, the mouse, himself, Charles Entertainment Cheese. It was a fun job for a high schooler, when you aren't scrubbing birthday cake out of the carpets after a family feud. This is the actual aftermath of a party I was hosting. I actually met my husband working there, and I came to love and appreciate all things Chuck E. Cheese and have found many collectibles over the years. Except this VHS tape. The tape itself resells for anywhere between $50 and $100, and at any given time there may only be one copy listed on eBay. Odds of finding it? I'm going to give it a 4 out of 10. The tape was apparently sold through Chuck E. Cheese restaurants and also at Target. I feel like I will encounter it someday if I just keep looking. Number 3. A Vintage Chuck E. Cheese Glass Wow, two Chuck E. Cheese things in a row. Almost like I planned that, huh? I have been after a vintage 80s Chuck E. Cheese drinking glass for the entire duration of my reselling career. And I'm not picky about it either. There are several different styles and I haven't found a single one. There is a clear set featuring Chuck Pasquale, Jasper T. Jowls, and Mr. Munch. I didn't see evidence of a Helen cup. Sexist much? There's a lot of different varieties to be found. I keep dreaming about the day I'll come across that pedestal cup or a set of the clear guys, but it's just not happening. Most of the cups and mugs are low value, maybe $20 to $25 shipped, with some examples going higher. The clear glass cups are $100 and up. Odds of finding? I'll put this a couple of notches below the tape at 2 out of 10 for the 80s cups and 5 out of 10 for the 90s cups. I find modern cups semi-regularly though. Every year that goes by, I'm sure remaining glasses are getting accidentally knocked off counters or have their graphics destroyed by the dishwasher. A VHS tape is a lot less likely to get accidentally destroyed and there are probably more of them in circulation. I'm sure these glasses were much easier to find when I first started reselling, but if I couldn't find them then, the odds only drop with every remaining year. Number 4. Peacock Blue Pyrex Weave Pattern Bakeware Transitioning from one type of glass to another, here is a piece of Pyrex that is easily overlooked. When most resellers think of Pyrex, they're thinking of this, or this, or this, meaning the opaque opalware with designs on them. Some might conjure up the transparent visions line. Even less will think about clear bottom mixing bowls, and probably no one but me is thinking about peacock basket weave pieces. A few years ago, I went down the rabbit hole that is old Pyrex sales brochures on the Corning Museum of Glass website. While researching the aforementioned clear bottom pieces, I learned all about the colorful line of transparent bowls and baking dishes. 
They came in some common colors like cobalt blue, which I have a few of, and also cranberry, as well as amethyst, which is somewhat uncommon, smoke gray, spring green, which is super uncommon, and then peacock. You could find it in the typical smooth pieces and the much less common basket weave pattern. It came in three sizes of bowl, a lidded casserole, a pie pan, a square baking dish, and a long baking dish. Ever since I laid eyes on it in that brochure while doing research, I have been dying to find a piece, literally any piece, of this peacock blue basket weave Pyrex in the wild. That would make this quest about five years old. Out of everything on this list, this would make me freak out the most. This is actually the entire reason I got the idea to do this series, because I figured if I couldn't find it, I could put it out there and maybe you could find it. My research points to these only being available around 2001 and 2002, so it was not produced for a long time. Prices for pieces range from 30s for a bowl and up to 100 for the casserole with a lid. I'm going to give this an optimistic 6 out of 10 for finding it. It's not like the Opalware Pyrex, which is always sorted out and sent to the online Goodwill in my area, and I doubt many resellers recognize its value, although they will now. And it's not super old either, so those factors give me a lot of hope that I'm going to encounter it someday. Number 5. An Aluminum Christmas Tree Maybe they just weren't popular in my area. Maybe people are still using them. Not to make a dig at the Midwest, but we aren't known for being the most modern. Maybe other resellers in my area know exactly what they are. Maybe I just don't go to enough garage and estate sales. Whatever the reason, I have never found one my entire time reselling. Aluminum Christmas trees came in sizes both small and large and were usually accompanied by a rotating color wheel to add a little dazzle, since you couldn't string lights on them like a traditional tree. They were really only popular for a little under a decade from the late 50s to 60s. Plain silver was the most common color, but they were also made in other colors like teal, green, gold, and pink. Much like Pyrex, these are only becoming more desirable and collectible, so it has only gotten harder to find them as the years go on. That said, I'm going to give this a very optimistic 5 out of 10 about finding one someday. Unless people are throwing them out, they were built to last, so supply isn't going to diminish a whole lot. Not to mention, I always see at least one reseller friend on Instagram find one every Christmas, so one time it's going to be my turn. Number 6. Dat Tape You may not know this because it doesn't come up often, but I love obsolete electronics. I've never met a Laserdisc or Betamax player I won't buy. I don't know, it's just a special interest area for me. I can't really explain it. I get such a rush when I find an obscure and obsolete media player. To give you an idea of my level of love, I seriously contemplated getting a Laserdisc logo tattooed on one foot and Betamax on the other. Like, the world's worst thug life tattoo. I've encountered a lot over the years, but I have yet to find anything DAT related, so this is about a decade long search. DAT was a format released in 1987 to be a successor to analog cassette tapes, much like digital CDs versus analog vinyl. In the US, the format was not very popular, with few pre-recorded tapes and players being available. You can identify the players and tapes by the DAT logo, and the tapes themselves are a bit smaller and more square than a cassette tape you're used to seeing. Blank tapes don't sell for a lot, but Walkman-style players will sell for 50 and up, and shelf-style players for 100 and up. Even though I'm including anything DAT related, I still feel this is only a 2 out of 10. It's a pretty obscure format, and I'm betting most of you haven't heard of it before this video. If you have, feel free to brag about it in the comments. Number 7. Reel to reel style cassette tape. Going from one cassette to another. I mean, what is a compact cassette but like a tiny reel to reel tape player in a portable plastic shell? Most people will think of this thing, or this thing, when they think of a cassette tape. But there are far snazzier versions that look like this. Cassette tapes are coming back into fashion, and collectors are going nuts for the ones that look like tiny reel-to-reel -reel players. But Heather, I just paused this video, and I searched reel-to-reel -reel cassette on eBay, and there are plenty to be had. Cheap, too. Are you full of shit or something? No, what you're seeing are reproductions coming out of Eastern Europe and Russia to fill the demand for this style. Actual vintage tapes like the TX Sound 52 and CRC90 are worth, on the low end, $30 for a used tape and $250 for a new sealed tape. I first learned about these in 2015 when Techmoan, a wonderful vintage and obscure electronics YouTuber, made a video about the TIAC OCAS open cassette system, which is an even more insane and cool version of the closed reel-to-reel -reel cassettes I've been talking about. That particular version with swap-out reels was only available in Japan, so I don't expect to ever see it, but if you thrift in Japan, definitely keep an eye out for it. So I've been after any vintage reel-to-reel -reel style cassette tape for six years now, which is a relative baby on this list. I'm very optimistic though that I'll find one because I don't see or hear many resellers talking cassettes. 
short of Type 4 metal type cassettes, which I plan to speak on in a future video. Number 8. An eye pet that is not an eye dog. Going from something that records and plays audio to something that also plays audio. Originally made by Sega Toys in Japan, the iDog made its way stateside by Hasbro in 2005. This was the era of the iPod, and the iDog was meant to be a companion. You plug it in with an aux cable and it plays your music while lighting up and dancing to the beat. Kinda like a dancing Coke can with a speaker. Remember that shit? In addition to the iDog, there was also the iCat, the iFish, IC the Penguin, you get it, and the iTurtle. While I still find and flip standard eye dogs occasionally, I have not encountered any of the other animals since they stopped working at Toys R Us. I recently watched a video by KK Clue that renewed my interest in the other eye pets, so it's only been a quest item for a little under a year. Eye dogs came in different varieties, and the prices reflect that. A standard eye dog will easily fetch $20 to $30, more for an interesting color or one that's new in the box. A larger plush eye dog will bring $30 to $40. An eye dog amped, which is a slightly upgraded version, usually sporting a colorful pattern and the ability to tap its foot, will bring 40 and up. The other eye pets I feel get way undervalued. You can find examples selling for 20 to $40, even though they're much less common than the other eye dogs. The turtle especially is quite rare, and I wouldn't ask less than 100 for one, since there's currently none listed and only one sold. That goes for all of these, really. Don't be afraid to put a high ask on them, because you'll probably get it. I'd be happy finding any of the other eye pets, and considering the fact that I do run into eye dogs often enough, I'm going to give this a super optimistic 9 out of 10. Number 9. Mattel Hyperscan Game Packs Hyperscan was a bare-bones game system released by Mattel in 2006. The system's gimmick was that you could buy a game and then buy additional packs of cards that would have different levels or abilities you could unlock by scanning them, hence Hyperscan. It seemed like it was trying to merge trading cards with video games and maybe a hint of toys to life, but it was a little early for that. I worked at Toys R Us for the entire duration of this product's existence, so I can say with experience, it was never popular. The system was discontinued just a year later in 2007 with only five games released. The prices on systems, booster packs, and controllers are nothing special. The actual games though, the five that exist, actually do sell for quite a bit brand new, which I was surprised to learn. Ben 10 and Wrestling are in the $40 to $60 range, with Marvel Heroes, X-Men, and Spider-Man hitting a little higher. I think I want to say I sold one just because I had front row seats to this console's birth and quick death. I only learned of Hyperscan game packs having any value within the last year or so, so a relatively new addition. I can't recall seeing any in the wild that I passed up though. Still, I give this a very optimistic 8 out of 10 for finding one day. Number 10. Yankee Candle Whiskers on Kittens Steering this ship way the hell in another direction from where I was, I'm going with this specific Yankee Candle to close out this list. Whiskers on Kittens was part of the My Favorite Things line of candles in 2012 and 2013. The candles were named for specific things in the song from The Sound of Music. Specific candles on the line were Raindrops on Roses, Whiskers on Kittens, Bright Copper Kettles, Warm Woolen Mittens, Brown Paper Packages, Cream Colored Ponies, Crisp Apple Strudel, Schnitzel with Noodles, Moon on Their Wings, Blue Satin Sashes, and Silver White Winters. If you follow me at all, you probably know I'm obsessed with cats, so this weird cat candle is just the sort of thing I want to say I found and sniffed just once. I'm also not going to lie, I'm curious what Schnitzel with Noodles, Mittens, and Brown Packages smell like. The candle itself sells for $60 brand new, which is about where the others in the line go for as well with schnitzel, moon on their wings, and blue satin sashes seeming a bit more scarce and commanding higher prices. Silver white winners did not have any current solds at the time of editing. That one appears to be very scarce and will sell for at least 300 with Terra Peak showing the last sold example going for 625. Any new or lightly used Yankee candle should be comped anyway because there are always high dollar holy grail scents to be found like Canary Island Banana, Hearts and Flowers, and Dune Grass. But being the crazy cat lady I am, I've made Whiskers on Kittens my white whale, and I've been searching about 5 years now. Odds of finding, I'm going to give this specific candle a 4 out of 10. If I include any of the My Favorite Things candles, I'll bump it up to a 5 out of 10. Any high dollar Yankee candle, I'll make it an 8 out of 10 because I do come across Yankee candles fairly often in my area. Thankfully, this one that my Goodwill cashier dropped and broke was not worth that much. I tried to make light of it saying, oh no! My candle! It's broken! But she didn't get the reference. 
And that concludes this list of 10 thrifting white whales. I've barely scratched the surface of my list of interesting thrifting bucket list items, so be sure to subscribe for future editions. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I hope you get out there and have fun and find one of my bolos and rub it in my face. <laughs>